Welcome to Uncivilized Vitality, another video. Um, since we're in Michigan, we do most of our um, hiking campaigns in northern Michigan, and half the year it's pretty cold. So people are always asking me when they come, um, what should I wear? Okay, so to break this down for most of the year in Michigan, probably three quarters of the year, uh, except July and August, which is typically our off season. Um, but this the simple rule of thumb when you go out is uh, layering. So we're going to talk about the different layers and some different things that you should have uh, in your cloth tool or clothing uh, department because that's sort of your first line of defense. There's another video we have where we talk about the, uh, the rule of threes. Right? The rule of threes, we have a whole video on that, but that talks about uh, how you have um, certain items you want to address in, a, in a, an outdoor or emergency situation. Uh, I hate the word survival. We'll talk about that later. Uh, check that video out. But basically, the first rule of three is uh, bleeding and breathing. Okay, if you're not bleeding, uh, bleed, bleeding, and you're breathing just fine, we're going to skip that and move right on to the second uh, law of three or rule of threes, which is three hours. Okay, in an outdoor situation, you got about three hours that you're going to want to um, control your, your exposure to heat or cold, and uh, otherwise you could be in trouble. So the key to avoiding this three hours limit to your exposure outside is it working in layers and in three layers, okay? Goes along with the rule of threes. Your clothing in the cold weather should go in three layers. You should always have around your body an, a wicking layer, okay? I'll just draw that around your feet. A wicking layer. So you wanna have a layer that is a wicking, okay? Your wicking layer, as closest to your skin, is going to be your um, your thermal underwear sometimes is called. People think that's for keeping you warm, but you want material like uh, those polypropylene underwear or uh, even silk if you can get it or some other new um, man-made materials or even wool if you can stand the itching to your skin. That's going to wick moisture away from your skin. Okay? Uh, cotton is a huge no-no at this level. Next to your, or above your wicking layer is going to be your insulating layer. Okay? That's going to be your insulating layer. This is going to be your warm fleece or wool layer, okay, insulating. That's your insulating layer. So this would be your, your pants and your, your shirt. So depending on, like say I have, a, I have a rash guard on today under my uniform, this would be a wicking layer, kind of pulls moisture away from my skin and keeps me dry. And then my uncivilized uniform, this would be my, my insulating layer, even though it's not, it's not very warm. But I would put on maybe a, a wool sweater or a fleece vest or something. And then your outermost layer, <clears throat> this is going to be your coat and your snow pants, right? Is your outermost layer is going to be your protective layer. Typically, you want this to be uh, waterproof or kind of heavy duty so it protects you from... Um, the elements, uh, rain and snow and cold, but you want it to be breathable. So you don't want it to trap moisture in, so you want to avoid like um, uh, plastics or vinyls or polyesters or anything that's going to keep the, the moisture in. So this is in general, a wicking, insulating, and protective layer. You can, you can don or doff your protective layer as needed, and then you can do your insulating layer. It doesn't have to just be one piece of clothing. Could be my uniform and a pullover vest uh, and a sweater. And then depending on how, maybe a, a light uh, uh, rain jacket over top of that, uh, depending on how warm or cold I get, I can, I can uh, alter my insulating layer. <clears throat> the other thing you want to think about in a separate sort of fashion will be those elements with your feet, okay? So your boots or shoes. Boots or shoes. Uh, same thing. You're going to want to use... A uh, wicking layer, insulating layer, and protective layer. The protective layer will be your boots and shoes on the outside. And then for your feet, your wicking and insulating layers usually come together in a pair of uh, wool socks. Wool socks are the best, okay? Um, some people, because the wool irritates their feet, um, some people like to run a set of sock liners, okay? You can put a piece, a uh, piece, you can put a pair of of silk or uh, polyester sock liners. Even men's dress socks work really well for this. Those sock liners will wick moisture away and the wool, even though it might absorb some moisture from your feet or through the sock liners, even wet uh, wool is gonna maintain most of its uh, insulative value. 
So a good pair of wool socks, again, no cotton when you're trying to stay warm, <clears throat> and then a pair of sock liners. Another two uh, areas, three areas actually, that deserve special attention um, with the three layers would be your hands, okay? And you're gonna want some, some gloves uh, or mittens, right? Mittens for just keeping your hands warm. Uh, gloves because they separate the individual fingers. They have to warm themselves. I don't find gloves as warm personally, but for dexterity and maybe uh, protecting my hands around camp from the firewood or um, the brush we have to move or some other things, I'll keep a pair of leather gloves and then I'll keep a pair of warm mittens and maybe even some wool mitten liners um, for, for pure warmth when we're just sitting around. <clears throat> then, of course, a hat. You can have uh, hats that protect you from the sun, hats that protect you from the elements like water and such, but don't forget to protect your ears and the back of your neck. Okay, so again, we're kicking a dead horse here, a nice wool cap, a wool beanie, a wool hat. Um, you can use uh, just a regular uh, boonie cap, and then uh, as it's cold, sometimes I'll fold up and put my silk Morigami over my head under there is another insulating wicking layer. Silk is excellent for warming and wicking. Okay, but having a nice stocking cap or a, a, a toque, some kind of cap to keep heat from coming out of your head. And then something around your neck, a neckerchief or a simple scarf, again, wool or silk to protect the large blood vessels in my neck from losing heat as it, uh, as it comes up and up to my brain, the top of my head. So protect your head, your neck, your hands, and your feet a little extra. Um, and then in general, on your body, your torso, arms, and legs, wicking layer, insulating layer, and then a protective outer layer. And then you can uh, mix and match these as you go. To keep it as simple as possible, a pair of thermal uh, underwear, that polypropylene or silk for a wicking layer. And then I just throw a simple pair of um, uh, wool trousers or um, even some joggers if they're not made of cotton um, or some linen pants uh, over top of that and then a nice light sweater or vest and then for a protective outer layer um, I'll just wear like a hockey jersey myself sometimes but sometimes like a wool outer coat or uh, even a ski jacket any of your outer layer and some snow pants depending on when and where in Michigan we go. And then typically I'll just use a pair of muck boots with a set of uh, a thick pair of wool socks. Uh, sometimes I'll use shoes uh, or go barefoot most of the year, except in the winter here in Michigan. And then a pair of gloves for handling things, but for the most part I don't, uh, I don't use those unless it gets cold. If I have to warm my hands for a minute, I just put them in my pockets. Okay? But approaching it with this layer of threes, wicking, insulating, and protective, especially around the hands, feet, head, and neck, in different ways, I can obey the rule of threes and protect myself from exposure danger uh, when I've only got about three hours without these uh, layers before I can have hypo or hyperthermia. We'll have another video talk about um, hot weather layering and what clothes you should wear when it's hot out in Michigan, which is really only those two weeks in the summer that pose any danger. So we'll, uh, we'll check that video out as well. And that's just uh, it, all we have for today. So like the video. Uh, hopefully this answers your question about what to wear uh, in general. The specifics would be up to you to meet these three when we go out camping in northern Michigan or on one of our hikes or campaigns. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and check out our other videos.